Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I have a short and quick video, I think, with something new and something old. So I um, got mention of a seller on eBay who has a bunch of new old stock Genius mice, in particular the GM6 mouse, which stems from the 80s. I think they might have been manufactured up into the 90s. I'm not sure about that. The seller, I think, was from Romania. Shipping was extremely fast. And um, he was also selling for pretty cheap. So um, that's always a good thing, especially for new in-box. And yeah, I can actually need such a serial mouse for the 386. I do have one, but it's badly yellowed. And I have this uh, weird mouse, which was low quality. I did an unboxing video of that as well. So having this mouse here is actually pretty nice because those here are more or less built like a tank. They are uh, the standard mice with the ball and the encoder wheels. So they need to be cleaned from time to time, but they last for years. I actually had this mouse back in the day as I think my second mouse. The first mouse that I had access to was an A4 Tech, but I don't think it will be possible to get that nowadays because it was a not the most famous company. But Genius, I think they are probably still around today. Not sure about that, but they were for a very long time. So this mouse is mouse systems and Microsoft mouse compat compatible. Mouse systems was the standard that used three mice and used a slightly different um, protocol, I think, over the wire compared to the Microsoft mouse. And Microsoft mouse would only support two buttons. But two buttons is what you need at most for DOS games. So being mouse systems compatible got ever less important and with the advent of scroll wheel mice and piece 2 and usb mice this usually just went away yeah uh, also important here no pad so optical mice back then needed a special pad with a raster like this uh, they wouldn't work on any other surface so that was something uh, the ball mice didn't need that but they had to be cleaned and stuff no extra power supply, that's a plus, because it has low uh, power consumption, 10 milliamps. And no extra interfaces needed, which sounds weird, but back then you had serial, mi serial mice or bus mice. The bus mice would use a special bus interface card or special port on a graphics card, for example. ATI graphics card, namely, often came with a bus mouse interface. Anyway, I would say... Let's just open it up. Oh, one more thing. Super high resolution, uh, 200 dpi. I think every gamer nowadays will laugh about that. But back then, it was pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's rip it apart. Mm -hmm. Nice and friendly cellophane. So does this come off? No, this is actually a sticker. But it has this fake leathery style looks like a book yeah this is definitely deep 80s maybe even 70s territory it's ugly 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 and does it open up somehow yes it does oh how nice look at this so this ah there is a diskette five and a quarter inch Copyright March 1987, so this answers uh, the question. So this looks really pristine. We will put that in the drive, right? That's nice. So we have the original software. We'll use that. We have a user manual. What does it say? The Genius Mouse CMOS version. That's low power and high quality version 6, GM6. Ah, that's why it's called GM6. Thank you for purchasing the Genius Mouse CMOS version 6. We have created this product for you, the customer with attention to high quality materials, ease of use and maintenance and durability. It is our sincere hope that you enjoy our mouse and that it gives you long-lasting, trouble-free service. 
If you have any suggestions that would help us improve our product, please let us know. Well, a few things come to mind. Okay, so Genius is a trademark of Kunying Enterprises, KYE. That's the company behind it. Not sure what they are up to today. Here's the installation. Um, okay, mouse systems mode. You don't have to do anything. Hold down any power, any button before turning on the power, then it's Microsoft. Oh, that's evil. So every time I want Microsoft mouse, we need to press a button. Oh well. So when using the Microsoft mouse driver, you need to do that. But we can probably use the mouse system's mouse driver. Uh, what is a mouse? How is a mouse useful? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, people people um, usually didn't have a mouse back then. It was pretty new and Windows wasn't the biggest thing yet. The Mac just came out two years earlier, or three, maybe. It has a soft switch, etc. All the stuff that you already read. System requirements. We need an IBM PC, XT or IT with at least 128 kilobytes of RAM. Yeah, those were available back then. An RS-232 serial interface, we have that. A monitor that supports mouse-driven software. Practically all monitors. Yeah, that that's true. Um, oh, and an IBM or Epson compatible graphics printer for hard copy output. That's neat. Again, technical specifications, they repeat all the stuff. Uh, Genius Paint Software. I'm, I'm wondering if the paint software is on there. We shall try that out in a minute. Um, bup, 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 bup. How to operate the soft switch. Yeah. Cleaning, how to clean it. Remove the ball from the bottom case. Clean the ball with warm water. And, ah, yeah, here. Here you can see it, huh? That's nice. Let's have a look at the actual mouse. Oh, look how nice it is. It is really, 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 really fresh. That's so cool. It looks really like new. That's crazy. Is there any date code? Probably not. It's just the serial number. Oh yeah, I remember this. These are the gliding pads. Here's some wire wrap. And a very long cable indeed. Which can be useful. Yeah, this is an extremely long cable. But it has also the DB25 connector. And usually you get the small one, I think a DB9 or something. Which is also what I'm using currently for my mouse. So this will go to COM port 2 and not COM 1. Which might be useful, so I can um, have both mice probably attached. Wouldn't work with the driver though. And the buttons are clicky. And for cleaning, you would open this thing at the bottom here, take it out, and then you can take out the ball. It's a steel ball with uh, rubber coating. And then there are these metal wheels with the encoders attached. And those metal wheels will become dirty, but they are metal. And with the other mice that I have, it's already plastic for, yeah, it's more cost effective, of course. There's a bunch of troubleshooting in here. That's an introduction to the Genius Pain program. Oh well, we will see if it works. This looks like a rocket, but it's a brush. Editing, yeah, I think we will just dive in there. Okay, very cool. 
Let's install the mouse. Looking at the floppy drive, we see a few things. First of all, the actual mouse driver and its utilities. And we'll copy that over to the hard disk because we want to load it whenever we boot the system, obviously. So the gmouse.sys is the actual mouse driver that you have to load in your config.sys file. And uh, there's also a quite extensive readme doc, which basically tells you the same things that are in the um, manual. And then there's a paint program. Let's copy that over as well. It's a mere 200 kilobytes. Comes with a couple of patterns and two example paintings. And we will have a look at that in a few seconds. But before we can use that, we actually have to install the mouse driver. And this is done under MS-DOS by modifying the file configsys on your C hard drive. So we will just do that. The configsys file loads drivers and similar things. And uh, until now, I've used the Microsoft mouse driver mouse.sys. But we will now use the Genius mouse driver. By using the device high command, it will be loaded into the upper memory blocks, freeing some of the precious 640 kilobytes of memory that you have available for DOS programs. After that, we will have to reboot the machine, so let's quickly do that. And um, after a short wait, we see the Dynamic Mouse Driver Copyright KYE Corporation is actually loading and it says there's a mouse installed on COM1. So that's nice. Let's go to the paint program and run it. Okay, here we go. And it's a CGA paint program. Well, I don't think I should have expected anything else. And it seems to work. There's a palette on the right with the four glorious CGA colors. I would have assumed that maybe at, in 1987 you would also get maybe an EGA program because that should have been widespread as well. But I mean, this is basically a free piece of software that you get with the mouse just so that you have something to play around with. And the mouse is obviously excellent for um, doing graphics operations. And the program also supports a bunch of patterns and yeah, you can you can probably do quite a bunch of things with it. Not me though, or at least not in the time frame here. <laughs> I would have to spend much more time. But let's see what kind of pictures they put in there. Columbia Pig is the Space Shuttle Columbia, which sadly broke up over um, during re-entry. So that's a bit sad, but back in the 80s it was still flying and was basically the first operational Space Shuttle and yeah, as a kid I probably found that very cool. And I do remember that I had this program as a kid as well. I don't remember this specific picture, but the next one that we will load, let's see, there was a second one called, oops, that was new, I wanted to hit the load, house.pick. That one rings a bell. And yes, some of you probably also know this if you had this mouse as a kid. Um, I thought as a kid this piece of graphics was pretty amazing. You can even magnify and set individual pixels, or you can use the middle mouse button actually when you are in mouse systems mode, which is uh, pretty good. So you can just uh, middle click on anywhere in the picture and edit the small details. That's pretty nice. And then you can also um, choose different palettes, but for some reason this button here doesn't do anything, I'm not sure why, but you can choose the background and then um, you can freely choose the background color. Well, white doesn't make any sense, but it gives some variation. So actually CGA supports 16 colors, but only four at a time in the 320 by 200 mode. Yeah, well, anyway, it definitely works. Um, this looks more like a C64 now. I think I'll leave it at that. I can say the mouse works fine. I think uh, it was worth the money. And it takes me back to my childhood, actually, because this is a very iconic mouse. Totally unergonomic, but otherwise very sturdy. 
all in all this about wraps it up i hope you enjoyed this you learned something please share like and subscribe if you want to you can also support me on patreon and ko-fi and if not that's no big deal either also make sure to leave a comment uh, and voice your opinion or whatever was your first mouse actually please let me know and other than that i hope to see you soon in the next video